Hey, my name is Lyric Rivera. I am autistic. I am ADHD. But I didn't know I was autistic or ADHD until I was an adult. When I was diagnosed autistic at the age of 29, that ADHD wasn't diagnosed until I was in my mid-30s. I also do Facebook Lives every week on Wednesdays at alternating times. And recently in the Facebook Lives, this topic of autistic and neurodivergent energy regulation keeps coming up. This is something I've talked about a lot in short format videos and mentioned quickly in other videos, but it's not something that I've dedicated the time to giving its own video to yet. And I think this is really important. If you would like to know more about why I say energy regulation is one of the biggest things that neurodivergent people often can struggle with, please do stay tuned. So before we get started, I want to explain what I mean about energy regulation and why I say this is something a lot of neurodivergent people struggle with. First off, there are various types of energy a person can feel or experience in one's body. There is emotional energy, when you get really excited, happy, angry, or scared, energy rises in your body. Or if you are feeling down and depressed, you may feel energy drained out of your body. Those are emotional energy fields. There is also sensory energy. For example, when I feel sensory overload, my brain feels like electric static is erupting out of it and I have way too much electric current flowing through my body and I need to slow that pulsing energy field down to stop the sensory overloads. There's emotional energy and there's sensory energy. As an autistic adhd -er, there is also inertia, autistic inertia, or just the struggle to get energy moving and slow energy down once it is moving. As an autistic person with the autistic inertia and as an adhd -er, I struggle to get myself going in the morning, struggle to get myself started, but then also struggling to stop myself once I get going. The transition from asleep to wake in the morning is very difficult and then slowing myself down enough because this freight train is going and going and going, slowing it down once I get amped up it's hard for me to regulate that energy, how to get that energy going and pull that energy back. It's not just the inertia. I struggle with lots of different kinds of energy, the emotional energy, the sensory energy, the inertia. Also, as an adhd -er, I feel like my attention is a kind of energy that I struggle to regulate. For example, I have attention. <laughs> It is just like this really big, powerful laser beam that is hard for me to focus and point in given directions. Sometimes my attention may go in on this one really big detail and I have hyper focus, lots and lots of attention, so much attention that the rest of the world no longer exists because my attention is so intense and so deep. But it might be that I'm focusing on the wrong thing and I'm ignoring something that I really should be paying attention to. Once again, it's struggling to regulate the attention, the energy of my attention, where my energy is going. The attention is where the energy is going to be. I even think my attention regulation is related to regulating my energy. For example, as an autistic adhd -er, one of my biggest struggles is finding the tasks that are energizing and the tasks that are draining and balancing out those things in my life. I've also figured out that sometimes there are draining tasks that I have to get through even when I don't have the energy to do them. So I can use tools to help amp the energy up or slow the energy down depending on what I need. If I'm struggling to get through my inbox and my emails, I can put on some music or a documentary in the background, something that gives me some of that dopamine, that energy, gives me energy. Put that on to help me power me through something that is draining and depleting my energy. Being really, really creative with using external tools to help me regulate these different kinds of energy that I 
experience difficulties with keeping in in the middle levels. This is one of the reasons why I say stimming as an autistic or neurodivergent person is so incredibly important. My stimming, especially the stuff that I do subconsciously, is a way that my body is expressing that energy. Remember energy regulation. If I am stimming because I'm excited, all of that energy is coming out of my hands and it's got the energy has to go somewhere. Energy once created has to be used up. So I've got to use up that energy. Stimming is one way that I use up the emotional energy. Or if I am having sensory discomfort, I may also stim to deal with that sensory discomfort and the rise in too much sensory energy. Just impulses firing off in my brain too much. Stimming is really good for that. The other thing that can be really helpful with energy regulation for me as a neurodivergent human is sensory seeking. So looking at things that are visually stimulating, listening to music that is calming or relaxing, or listening to music that'll amp me up and give me more energy, depending on how I'm feeling. If I am sensory seeking, I'm needing something and I am trying to fill a need. If I am avoiding sensory situations, sensory aversion, it's because I'm avoiding something that is going to give me too much or the wrong kind of bad sensory energy. Stimming, sensory seeking, and sensory avoiding all have very important functions for autistic and neurodivergent people. And there are some of the ways that I personally deal with the struggles that I have with energy regulation. There are other things people can do for regulating energy. As an adhd -er, ADHD medications can be key for some of us in regulating our energy. Some of us may self-medicate with coffee or other substances to artificially raise our energy. I personally have to be a little bit careful with coffee because I have some other co-occurrent health conditions that too much caffeine can be bad for. Back when I used to not know any better, I would drink two putts of coffee a day and wonder why I was having anxiety attacks and heart palpitations. It's like the first pot of coffee was probably all right, but that second pot of coffee was way too much. These are my thoughts on neurodivergent energy regulation. I feel we talk about emotional dysregulation and all of these kinds of dysregulation that really boil down to having too much or too little of certain kinds of energies that we need to go about and do the tasks that we want to do in our days. I'd love to know what do you do to help yourself stay regulated and stay in sync. Being dysregulated is a horrible feeling. Having too much energy in my body and not enough energy in my brain, I just feel like I'm going to explode. I can't even put it into words. Or having a brain that has a lot of energy in it and a body that has zero energy left, same thing. It's like I have so much electricity inside me, I feel like I'm going to explode. If you know the feeling I'm talking about, please let me know so that I know I'm not alone in this. I have a feeling other people have experienced this too. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this week. I put out new videos each and every single Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I hope to see you next week. Be sure to subscribe, follow, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a video when that is distributed because the way social media works, who knows if social media will let you know it happens. If you don't get a notification, check back. I'm constantly putting out new videos. Thanks to everyone who comments, shares their own experience, especially everyone who shares these videos. Thanks. Sharing is caring. I couldn't do this without you. And of course, I do want to say thanks to those of you who subscribe on Patreon, YouTube channel members, Twitter super followers, Facebook supporters. Also, uh, someone asked recently for my Venmo information. I didn't have Venmo, but I have Venmo now. It's Neurodivergent Rebel on Venmo. Thanks for everyone who does that monetary support. You are helping to pay for things like the transcriptioning software for these videos, the closed captioning software I use on my phone, the website hosting where I host these accessible versions of the videos with transcripts because Facebook is not always accessible. The technology with which the blog is filmed on, all of that would not be possible without the help and support of the viewers like you. So I always wanna say thanks because literally you make this blog possible, this vlog, blog, whatever it's called, you make it possible. I couldn't do it without you. I always want to share my gratitude. 
Thank you all so much, each and every single one of you. I will see you next Wednesday. I send my love. Bye, all.